Recently, Angus at Maker's Muse posted a video, hashtag 3D printing on YouTube, asking other maker and 3D printing content creators to answer some questions. That's what this video is. I'm gonna do my best to answer the questions that were posed. Always showing your butt to camera. Why? From my perspective, this is a fun way for you folks to learn a little more about the creators that you watch, and maybe we can learn a little bit about each other too. As much as anything, I think it's a fun idea. So let's get into the questions. Question number one, when did you first hear about 3D printing? I personally remember the first machine that I intended to buy in 2015. I was really close to pulling the trigger on it, but I don't remember when I exactly first heard about 3D printing. Ever since I was a wee one, I've been into technology and building my own custom computers since I was like 12 years old, going to computer shows when that's the way you bought hardware, at a little farm venue where you bought hardware, PC, CPUs, and motherboards and such, and put my computers together. So I'm sure I saw a MakerBot replicator or a cupcake. I can kind of picture the wooden box on the pages of a PC magazine. And now I own one with Project Reanimaker where I've turned a MakerBot replicator into a more modern Core XY machine. What I do crystal clear remember was in 2015, I was working at a hot rod shop in upstate New York, Tucci Hot Rods. And I was so, so close to pulling the trigger on a See Me CNC Rostock Max V2, their Delta 3D printer kit. What kept me from picking it up was the time it took to assemble. They quoted something like 24 hours to put it together. I'd never built one. I was intimidated and I really didn't have free time to be spending that long putting something together. I felt like at the time anyway. In hindsight, I really wish I had picked it up so I could have started my 3D printing journey a lot sooner. Question number two, what was the first thing you 3D printed? I very clearly remember this. My first 3D printer was an Ender 3 that I bought off of Newegg. It was the first machine that I ever saw under $200 when I finally looked back into 3D printing. So I scooped it up and I ran a roll of black PETG through it and that thing printed a Benchy. Here's a photograph of the Mandic Labs mascot, Gene, observing the first 3D print and making sure it was laying down really nicely. I probably have that original Benchy around here somewhere, but I don't know where at the moment since the move. That thing actually turned out pretty good. Probably took about two hours. I sliced it myself. I loaded up the PETG and that was the first material I chose to work with because I came into 3D printing looking to prototype parts for the custom cars that I was building as that was my career and my content focus at that time with the My Hot Rod Hippie channel. So PETG seemed like the material I wanted to work with instead of PLA as an entry level way to make engineering type prints. It did not take long before 3D printing entirely took over my life and now it's what I do both for a living and for my content. Also, Jean is still continually observing my work. She's currently snoozing in the corner of the office. Before we get to question number three, I wanna stop and thank this video's sponsor, viewers like you. Seriously, any of the audience members out there who choose to go out of their way and support what it is that I do, making content week after week, I appreciate you so very much. To help show that appreciation and to maybe incentivize folks who aren't already supporting, we recently started launching the Fabled Creatures series. These are 3D printable desk statues of creatures from myth and legend that you can use to decorate your home, your office, or get ready for Halloween. We have Gregor the Gargoyle, the old Dark Lord Cthulhu, our most recent release, the Appalachian Terror Mothman, and I'll give you a quick preview of the next release that's coming, the Grim Reaper. This is still in prototype, we're still working on it, but I'm really happy with where it's going. And we already have the next design after Grim Reaper in the works. So there is more coming in this series, and you're also gonna see some big stuff from this in an upcoming video. So thank you to everybody who's already supporting. If you haven't gotten the STLs for these, they're available on those various platforms. You can find them listed. And if you're interested in picking these up for yourself, you could back through one of those various platforms or pick them up from shops, such as the Patreon shop or the Thangs Marketplace. Okay, now let's get to question number three. Do you view 3D printing as a hobby or a tool, and why? For me, the answer is very easy. It's both. There's just so much you can do within the sphere of 3D printing. 
I originally got into it, as I said, to rapid prototype parts before I sent them off to be machined or and to improve my design skills for the projects I was working on building cars. But now I build 3D printers and I design 3D printable objects. There's so many different ways you can go with it as a hobby and as a tool. I think it was Daniel from West3D who probably said it best, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said that with his ADD brain, 3D printing keeps him engaged and sucked into it because even if you get bored with building 3D printers, you can then 3D print with 3D printers. You can make things. You can print out parts to build Nerf blasters and RC cars. And when you get tired of that, you can go back to building 3D printers. There's so many different directions you can go within this one niche that it keeps my ADD brain absolutely just running in a circle. And I kind of love that. I use 3D printing as a tool almost daily. I use it to produce parts for random household things, for projects, for videos, for my studio space, cars, just to make silly decorative stuff. There's so many ways that I can go with it that it's a tool, but it's also a hobby. In fact, I actually created an entire second channel, Mandic Labs, and I sold it to my partner Ruby as, well, I know I don't really have time for this, but I need a hobby. And I'm gonna go use that as my hobby channel to make 3D printers and build them on streams and just have fun with it. Now it's a portion of my business, but I still really enjoy that portion of the business. I said it numerous times on streams, but I don't know if I ever said it in a video. I feel like 3D printing is at a bit of a fork in the road. We're at the point where you can buy a daily driver, an appliance, your bamboos, your Prusa Mark IVs that out of the box, 10 minutes, you're up and running and you can just print stuff, whether it's fun for your hobbies or tools for your work. You can get it and just go. But then there are those of us who still enjoy the rep wrap and the custom and the building of things. We're the hot rodders. We're putting a bunch of time into getting maybe marginally better than the out of the box experience that you can get, but we're having so much fun doing it and we don't really care about that factor. We are the hot rod custom car builders, and then there are those folks, nothing wrong with it, who just wanted to run a daily driver. Let's move on to the next one. Question number four. Angus says this isn't a trap. It really feels like one. What is the best 3D printer? This is such a loaded question, and whenever I get it, I always say, it depends. What's your budget? What are your wants? What are your needs? Do you need to print high temp materials, abrasive materials? There's just so many variables to this question. But then Angus said something that reframed it for me and I had an immediate answer. He said, But if I was gonna have just one 3D printer right now and I thought I like lost everything scaled back. When I view this question from the perspective of if I could only keep one of my machines, which one would it be? I know exactly what the answer is. It is my Voron 2.4 300 millimeter version. That machine I have built myself. My blood, sweat, and tears are in that thing. I adore it for that reason. I can tinker with it, I can tweak on it, I can play with it when I want to have that technical fun. But at the end of the day, it's also one of my most reliable printers at this point that I just run for hundreds and hundreds of hours and don't worry about having issues with it. It can print a range of materials from PLA to nylon, polycarbonates, and it does so well. It's overall the machine that if you tried to pry it from my hands, they better be cold and dead because otherwise you're not getting it. And yet I haven't unboxed it since I moved into the new studio space. I really, really need to change that soon. Last, but most certainly not least, question number five. What is your number one tip for beginners? This is the same advice whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro at 3D printing, and it is pay attention to your slicer output. Once you slice a design before you offload it, you send it to print, look at the preview closely. Go layer by layer. You can do this by quickly scrubbing up and down. You will be amazed at the issues you can catch right then and there that will cause print failures down the line and you'll save yourself the hours, the filament, and the headache of any of it because you'll catch it before you ever send the file to the machine. 
It could be as simple as not realizing a section of a print needs support. It could be finding that the file is corrupted and there's a big chunk missing out of it. And it's not gonna turn out the way it's supposed to without some repair work. This is along the same lines of advice that I give to people who aren't into 3D printing yet. If you haven't even unboxed your machine or you don't own one and you're just curious about it, download a slicer. If you're not familiar, this is the software tool that takes the 3D file that you are going to cut up into individual layers in the software, slice it, and it will convert it into machine code, G code, that your 3D printer can then interpret to produce the 3D print. You can start playing with all the variables and the settings, download STLs for free and load them into there and see what happens when you change settings. There are hundreds if not thousands of variables and settings in 3D printers these days. They're so powerful now, but so many of them people don't have any clue what they do. You can sit down and just make one change, slice the design, look for the difference, look at column A, look at column B, what's the difference between these two pictures here? And see what changes. Change an infill type and then you'll see, oh wow, this one prints an hour faster with just this infill change. You can learn things before you ever send a print to a machine. Slicers are such a key part of 3D printing and they are a large part of why machines have gotten as good as they have in recent years. So play around in there for a while and really pay attention to what you're doing in those settings and you'll be amazed at the difference in your prints. And with that, we have completed the quest. We have answered the questions of Angus. Hashtag 3D printing on YouTube. Look for other videos in this series to see what other folks have to say. Learn more about your favorite creators or maybe pick up some tips and advice or view things from a different perspective than you usually would. Thanks to Angus for making this series. It's a great idea and I'm happy to be a part of it. If you found this video interesting, maybe check out the original video from Angus if you haven't already seen it or this video that YouTube thinks is best for you from me. Be sure to get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you folks.